Okay, here is an original routine based on a clever procedure devised by Warner Miller. So I'll add a link in the description below to where you can find Warner's original performance for what I'm going to show you here today. Okay, so all you need is the Ace of Clubs for this, and then you need six random cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, free to mix these as much as you like, or the spectator can mix them. Let's move that up a little bit. Okay, and then they gather them up, and then they just deal them into two piles of three cards each. Okay, now the spectator's free to take a look at the top card of either pile and to remember that card. So let's say they look at this one here. So it looks like it's the two of diamonds. So that is their card to remember. They set it back down and now they bury it under the other packet of three cards. And then from here, we just set the ace of clubs on top. Now at this point, you have a choice as the performer and you can test both of them and decide which one you prefer. You can have the ace of clubs face up like I've set here, or you could have it face down. Okay, so either way. The reason I'm having it face up is it does give the spectator a window into how the cards really are being randomly moved about. It's like the ace of clubs doesn't stay in the same place or something crazy like that. Okay, so what we do is we just spell out ace of clubs dealing left to right. Let me just show you. It's kind of an interesting way to do it. You go A, C, E, O, F, C, L. Now you pick up these three cards to finish the spelling. So L, and then you choose either one for each letter. So we still need to spell U, B, S. So maybe you just want the top one. U, B, S. That would be just fine. Let's do that again. A, C, E, O, F, C, L. And then maybe you want U and then B, S. Okay, very good. When we do a third. Oh, by the way, see how the uh, ace of clubs is moving about. A, C, E, O, F, C, L. Now you want to pick the ace now. U and then maybe the bottom one. B, S. Okay. Why don't we do it a fourth time? A, C, E, O, F, C, L, U, B, S. Your choice as to which card is used for each of those three letters. Okay. Very good. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're just going to spell out Ace of Clubs in the following way. A, C, E, drop the rest on top. O, F, drop the rest on top, C, L, U, B, S. Okay, so let's just think about this. You were allowed to deal these cards left, right, left, right as many times as you like. In fact, the final three letters of clubs, you could choose any one of those three cards that were left in the right-hand pile to represent each of those letters. And it is honestly the case that you can perform that procedure of dealing left, right, left, right in the way that I showed you as many times as the spectator would like. And then we just simply spelt Ace of Clubs. But what I have discovered is, depending on the choices made by the spectator in how many times to deal left, right, or more importantly, which of those final three cards are used for which letters and clubs, something amazing happens where their noted card rises to the top. And it's an indication of your choice making skills. So did that happen here? Did you just make a perfect series of choices to bring your card to the top? Let's just take a look. Oh, I think you did. <laughs> if I remember, the two of diamonds. Of course, you as a performer won't know that that's their card, but the spectator will. And the fact is, they should feel good about revealing the reality that their card has risen to the top because the only way that can happen is if they make a perfect sequence of choices along the way where they are in control of each stage of those choices. Whoa. Okay. Well, I think you passed the test here. Okay. So let's take a look at this. How does it work? Well, you just do everything that I did. Okay. So uh, you begin with uh, six cards like this, and then they note the top one. I don't know if we should just do the top one here again. 
Okay, so they know that one. This one goes on top. Now you could have this face down, okay? And I'm not sure if it's better or worse to do it that way. I think it's nice that the spectators see the Ace of Clubs moving around, you know, quite randomly. It's going to move. Now, a note to you as a performer, it's going to move into four distinct positions bef before it recycles into appearing in those four different positions within this packet of seven, okay? And most spectators aren't going to have you do this too many times. Uh, so anyway, that's one way to do it, the way that I did it, or just have this face down. And then from there, you just do everything that I did. It's self-working. And it really is the case. Let's do the A-C-E-O-F-C-L. And then we're going to spell U-B-S with these. And they are free to choose any of these. Okay. Now, the secret is that their card uh, is never, ever, ever among these. Okay, so it doesn't even matter what order. So that's part of the deception of it. Their card is never found in this final set of three. In fact, where it will always be found, I'll show you right here, as you can see, is fifth from the ultimate top. Let me move these over. So imagine these can be put in any order you like. It doesn't matter, but there's three of them. So one, two, three cards, then four, five. Their card is a fixed point relative to this procedure. So it will always stay in the fifth position, no matter how these are ordered and set on top, okay? Or no matter how many times you do this left-right dealing, okay? So it's always going to be a fifth from the top. In fact, at this point, why don't we just go ahead and we'll have it face up so you can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so it's fifth from the top. You see it there? Okay. And now the final step will bring the card that's fifth from the top to the top. Okay. So A, C, E, drop the rest on top. O, F, drop the rest on top. C, L, U, B, S. And that is guaranteed to bring their card to the top. Okay. Well, I've given you the secret behind it. Um, how Warner Miller came up with this procedure, I haven't a clue. So he doesn't share that in his write-up. Uh, but take a look at his original performance of this, and I'll have a link to that performance in the description below. So thank you for watching, and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.